Hi, I am Jos. Today we are going to talk about the uh, ownership review of Mahindra Thar. This was bought only as a second car. As the other car, what I have is a low slung sedan. I thought the next car must be uh, just uh, better uh, ground clearance uh, and which has anywhere going capability. And the automatic was uh, selected because most of my driving is within the city. And, and uh, automatic would be much convenient. Uh, I cannot hurt my left knee keeping on pressing the clutch. So an uh, automatic was selected. After why a petrol car and why not a diesel? By specs, this has a better torque. Usually diesel cars are, uh, comes with a better torque, but uh, in tire, uh, petrol came with a better torque. And I like refinement uh, over uh, fuel efficiency. Usually that's what I uh, consider while buying a car. Actually, uh, in Chennai roads are mostly flooded and I will be caught in home. So I thought uh, this time I must buy a, a car with high ground clearance and uh, the good uh, water wading capability. Car has the ability to wade through 600 mm of uh, water and uh, this must be mostly enough to uh, wade through uh, flooded streets in Chennai during uh, monsoon. Uh, I must be able to uh, go anywhere and uh, that is one of the main reasons Star was bought. What I like about this car is the first point to, uh, point to tell would be the uh, torque engine. Even though it's uh, petrol, it comes with 320 Newton meter of torque and uh, nowhere you lack power or torque or anything in this car. It, it keeps pulling and pulling. Uh, right from the uh, low RPMs to, uh, to around uh, 3500 to 4000 RPM, it pulls very cleanly. And the next next highlight would be the, uh, while driving in the city, uh, I was always used to a sedan or a hatchback, but uh, I love to drive it very carefully, whether it's a bad road, whether it's a speed breaker, or something, I always have to be very careful about driving. But uh, because of this ground clearance, I can easily drive, I'm not stressed, I'm not anxious what road is ahead. Whatever may be the road, I can drive through. To talk about the uh, comfort of driving, the driver seats are comfortable. They are ergonomical. I don't find any problem with the driver seat. I have driven uh, around 6,000 kilometers and I have uh, gone for long drives. I have done off-roading, driven within the city. Uh, I have never uh, felt any fatigue uh, with this driver seat. It's uh, comfortable. Uh, this being a tall car, Always uh, we have a good vision of uh, what is going around in the car. You see the road, you see end of the bonnet and uh, you sit uh, quite high on the uh, from the road and uh, visibility is a very good plus of this car. Even though it has uh, good uh, off-roading capability, and other capabilities. Another one big selling point of this car to the urban population is its looks. It has a great road presence and it's a head turner. Wherever you go, there are people to turn around and see this car. Steering mounted controls are uh, comfortable to use and we don't have to take eyes off the road. Either it's a call or increase the volume or decrease the volume or it's uh, cruise control. All, all controls come handy on the uh, steering wheel and they are comfortable to use. Uh, if you would ask me, if, uh, do I have dislikes about this car? Yes, there are many. To highlight uh, the dislikes, the first thing would be the shift logic of the uh, this gearbox. It doesn't take much of input, it's, it's only shifting with uh, speed. Only speed is taken as input is what I understand. Unless it reaches a certain speed, it doesn't upshift. It keeps, uh, the engine keeps rowing until it reach, reaches a certain speed. Uh, look at the speedometer and the RPM. The, way the vehicle is driving almost around 70 kilometers per hour and the RPM still stays at 2000 RPM. It, and this brings down the uh, fuel efficiency by uh, a big margin. So, Mahindra could have worked better on this gears. The engine is, uh, has good, good amount of torque 
uh, even at low RPMs. So we don't have to keep revving the car uh, to keep the car uh, rolling. Even at 60 km, the, the car comes with a six-speed transmission and uh, it, it can upshift even at the lower speeds. Uh, there is manual override for uh, upshifting and downshifting of gears. Uh, but uh, upshifting works only for the first three years. We don't have control to uh, shift more than three years. When we push the uh, gear lever to the left, it moves to the manual. Ma manual. And now I am trying to upshift and you don't see, there is no shift. We are already in fourth gear. There is a, there is a down downshift needed. It downshifts, but if there is an up upshift needed. It only when when the car shifts, it shifts. We fell out to talk about the fuel efficiency of this car. It returns around uh, seven to seven point five within the city, and uh, on on the highway, uh, it returns around uh, nine to ten. If we driven sedately, we would we get a better mileage? No, only for uh, driving sedately, I get this mileage of seven to seven point five. And if the uh, car is rowed, it returns must be around 5 to 6 and not more than that. Uh, this car being a heavy car, approximately 1,750 kgs and a 2 litre turbo petrol engine. Aerodynamics also doesn't help this car much because this is a boxy car. Surely there will be wind resistance and uh, it, it wouldn't be fuel efficient, that's expected. But uh, this fuel efficiency is very poor. Mahindra could have worked on a city mode or something like that. So that the uh, vehicle upshift fast and uh, they could have given a manual override, even that's not there. Mahindra should really work on this again so that it returns uh, better. At least 20% more of fuel efficiency is expected with the current uh, fuel prices, getting a fuel efficiency around uh, 5 to 6 in a very congested uh, road. And uh, 7 to 7.5 uh, in a usual city road is kind of very poor. Uh, in off-roading conditions, I have not exactly calculated the uh, fuel efficiency, but uh, it's surely below 5. If you ask me how is it to drive on the highway for a tall car and uh, for a car this heavy, uh, we cannot expect it to be a mile muncher. I am not comfortable to, first of all, I would say I wouldn't, I wouldn't drive a tall car uh, much uh, very fast. And it comes with a soft suspension. It's not a great handler because it's, uh, that's not expected out of an SUV. It can go anywhere, but we cannot drive it fast. I don't dare to drive this car uh, above uh, 80 kilometers per hour. On the highway, I must be driving between 80 and 90 and not more than that. Uh, we would be averaging around must be 65 kilometers per hour. So it takes a long time to uh, cover distance. I am comfortable to drive it within the city. Uh, the view is clear. We have a stall stands and uh, it has enough torque. And uh, for city speeds, it's uh, comfortable to car to drive as well. At low speeds, you don't, you, you don't feel the, the roll. Which it doesn't bother you much. Apart from that, if you will have to call the negatives of driving dynamics, it has pitch, it has roll, it has sway, it has bounce and what not. It has every negatives when it comes to driving dynamics. But uh, being an SUV, we cannot uh, keep complaining about it. Only after knowing all this, we buy an SUV. We will have to accept it's a car with uh, higher ground clearance and the center of gravity falls high. And so we will have to drive it slow. This being a very heavy car, as soon as you start driving, you can feel the weight of the car. Even if you brake, the nose dive is heavy. And uh, being in hydraulic steering, you can feel that the steering is heavy. And you can feel the heft of the car. The window control buttons are not ergonomically placed. They are in the center console, uh, near to the uh, gear shifter. When you drive between two cars, you always get confused. Uh, I search for window control buttons, uh, my other car in the central console and this car I come and search for it in the windows and it's always a confusion. If I love to talk about the rear seats, it's not a good place to be in this car. You can uh, be either in the driver's seat or in the passenger seat. Uh, rear seats, if you have a kid at home, it's, it's a place for them. Getting in and out of the uh, rear seat is a big pain in this car. You must be uh, fit enough to get in and uh, out of the car. If I have to talk about boot space, actually there is no space in the boot. It's only uh, you have a small backpack can be kept in the boot. And uh, it's a non-existent boot space. Mahindra could have worked on uh, extracting little bit more of boot space in this car. The, uh, the rear seats can be folded, get little bit more of space. All four occupants in the, sea, in the, in the car, you hardly have any space to uh, put your stuff in the car. It takes... Uh, 
two and a half full steering uh, rotation to move the wheel from one end to the other end. You need a bit of uh, power on the hand to uh, turn it. When it comes to 4x4, we have uh, three modes, two high, uh, which drives only the rear two wheels. Uh, four high uh, drives the uh, uh, front wheel and the uh, rear wheel. And 4L is for uh, low speed crawling and it drives all the four wheels. Thanks for watching this video. Let's talk about other cars in our subsequent videos.